Um, hi everyone, my name is Mickey. I'm in 10th grade and I'm so excited to be talking about restarting your relationship with God because um, trust me, I know how it feels to want to restart with him, but not knowing how to or if I even want to or if I even have or if, if I'm even like worthy of God's love. But um, before I get into it, I'd love to pray for you all. That'd be okay. If you can bow our heads and close your eyes. Um, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for blessing. I pray that you can speak with every single person on this Zoom call, Lord, that they're able to get something out of this message, Lord. I pray that you can speak with them with any of their struggles. I pray that they were able to have a wonderful time during winter camp and that they were able to grow with you, Lord, and to learn something about you. I pray that you can help with, help anyone who is is restarting their relationship with you, Lord, that you were able to be with them through, the, through their past through their path, Lord. I pray that you can to keep us all safe and healthy through this time. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Um, okay, so let's start. Um, I feel like a lot of us, for when we want to restart with God, we're waiting for the right time and we never know when or how to. And for me specifically, when the pandemic started, I was like waiting. I was like, okay, when I am able to go to church in person, then I'll restart my relationship with God. Or when I'm able to like, when life is able to go back to normal, then I'll restart. But that's like, you have to, re I don't know how to explain it, but like, you guys shouldn't be waiting over and over when you should just like able to be restart right now because it's the perfect moment and God wants you right now he wants you to restart with him um if you guys can open up your bibles I'm going to be reading in Isaiah chapter 43 verses 1 through 4 and that says but now this is what the Lord says he who created you Jacob and he who formed you Israel do not fear for I have redeemed you I have summoned you by name and you are mine when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush, and Seba in your steed. Since you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, and nations in exchange for your life. Um, I really, really love verses two and three because God is saying that he's going to be with us through, through the whole journey. He's going to pass through the water. When you pass through the waters, he will be with you. Um, and he also says, when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze for I'm the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Um, God delivered us and is faithful with us. He, he put Israel on restart so that they, so he's able to remind them to trust him and to put their faith into him. I'm going to jump down to Isaiah 43, verses 16 through 19. And that says, this is what the Lord says. He, he who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there never to rise again, distinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things and do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Um, verse 18 really spoke to me where he says, forget the former things and do not dwell on the past. Because I feel like sometimes I can definitely relate to this where in the past, we're like, oh, my, um, my, my past mistakes or my sin is too big and that like I'm not worthy of God's love. But he, Jesus is telling us here to forget the form, to forget the past, forget the former things, and to go to Him and to start your relationship with Him, because He will always forgive you. He was, his love will always be there for you. So during this season of restart, God wants to draw you back, and He wants you to know that He's not abandoning you. He and He wants you to go back to Him. Um, an example I read in a devotional not too long ago, and I feel like it fit perfectly into this is sometimes like our phones and computers will be working completely fine, we'll be using them, and then all of a sudden they'll freeze and that little loading part will pop up. And in order for it to start working again, we have to restart our device. And sometimes I feel like we could be, we could be stuck in that loading state, little loading part. And in order for us to go back to God and able for us to, for us to like go back to him and to, grow deeper with him we have to restart our relationship with him to 
um, we like we see that the connection has been lost and that we have to go to we have to go to restart. We see that we've been we've become disconnected. We saw that signal, but we just lost our connection with God. And God wants you to restart. So you um he wants you to restart in order to have the right relationships, the relationship with him, the right relationship with your friends and family, because when you have the right relationships with him, you'll have the right relationships with your friends, your families, with significant others, anything like that. Uh, I'm going to go to verses Psalms 139, verses 1 through 4. And that says, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with my ways before a word is even on my tongue. You, Lord, know it completely. And then I'm going to go to seven through eight. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If, you, if I make my bed in the depths, you are there. And then... 13 through 14, for you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb, because I praise you, I praise you because, because I am fearfully and wonderfully made, your works are wonderful, and I know that full well. Um, again, with um, thinking about the past and thinking we're not worthy of God's love, he's saying here that he made us fear, that we, that he, because we, we are fearfully and wonderfully made, and no matter what, God will love us, he forgives of all of our sins. He wants us to go back to him. Um, he's loving and he's always going to love us unconditionally and he wants us to restart. He can't reject our love, um, but you can reject his love. His love is always going to be there for us. We just have to receive it. Um, and I want you guys all to remember that it's never too late to restart your relationship with him, no matter how how late you th feel like it is or you think that you're not worthy. It's never too late. And God always wants to draw you back to him. He wants you to go back to him. Um, he wants to have those deep, meaningful relationships with you. In order to have those, you have to restart. One more verse I'd love to read for you guys. It's going to be in Revelation chapter 2, verses 2 through 5. And that says, I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how, fall, how far you have fallen and repent and do the, do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove, remove your lampstand in its, in its place. Um, I feel like sometimes it's hard for us to restart because Jesus isn't number one in our lives. We could Sometimes we have idols or different things above him, whether that's our phones, whether that's our friends or anything we can be putting above him. And he wants us to take just to take a step back from those and to go to him and to have him number one in our lives. Um, something I heard in one of Pastor Eric's sermons three weeks ago, and I feel like it was perfect for this, is in able to restart and have the deep, meaningful relationship with God, um, we have to change our mindset to we get to instead of have to. Instead of saying, oh, I have to read my Bible, or I have to pray to God today, or I have to go to Wednesday nights, get to change it to I get to pray to him, I get to learn about Jesus, I get to read my Bible. You have to be excited to get to know the Lord and that that you're excited to have a relationship with him and to grow deep and meaningful, have a good, deep, and meaningful relationship with him. Because God allows us to restart in order to help us grow even closer and deeper with him. And he always wants us to turn back to him no matter, no matter what. Um, that's it for my speech. Um, if I could pray you guys out, that would be great. Um, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you. For everyone who joined this Zoom meeting, Lord, that they were able to take something out of it, Lord. I pray that you continue with every single one of them if they are restarting their relationship with you, Lord, that you're able to be with them through their path and through their journey, Lord, for them to know that you're always there for them no matter what, and that it's never too late to turn back to you and to go back to you, Lord. I thank you for every single person here today, and I pray that you can keep, the, keep us all healthy and safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. But that's it. Amen.